Hey, I'm Dr. Zandra Palma. I'm here in my office at Parsley Health in New York City, and I'm going to explain to you what the MTHFR gene is. If you haven't heard of this, you're about to, and stick around because this might pertain to you. A lot of people have a mutation, not really a mutation, what we call a polymorphism, a slight variation in this gene, um, and the effects are broadened across the body. So this probably does pertain to you, especially if you're of European descent, but other continents have this gene mixed in as well. So what does the MTHFR gene do? It controls a process called methylation. And methylation is a process that we use in every cell of our body probably a billion times a minute throughout the body. So if you have a, a problem with doing this process, it's affecting every cell of your body. Methylation is used in liver detoxification, in making and processing and getting rid of neurotransmitters, in getting rid of old hormones, in changing and turning on and off bits of DNA, in changing proteins, in processing out uh, amino acids that we don't want to have a buildup of. In fact, one of the ways that we measure in real time how well you're methylating is to measure an amino acid called homocysteine. Homocysteine is processed out by this process methylation, and if you're not as good, good at methylation, you're gonna have more homocysteine sticking around. What's the problem with that? Homocysteine allows calcium to go where we don't want it to go, and that's into the arterial walls. So if your homocysteine is above seven, you're at a higher risk for arterial events. And by arterial events, I mean things like heart attacks, things like strokes, things like even little mini strokes that over time can cause dementia. So we wanna keep that homocysteine low, and we keep that homocysteine low by keeping methylation going. If you have a variation in this gene function, in the MTHFR gene, you may be 30% not as good at other people as doing that. You may be 50% less good at doing it. You may be 70% less good at doing it. Um, and it's a, it's a group of genes that handle methylation, not just one gene. We call several of them MTHFR and several of them something else, but that's the really important one. So if you're not as good at doing this process, there are, are biochemical workarounds that we can do where we can push methylation for you. So it's nice to know if you have one of the variations in this gene. So your doctor can say, oh, we're gonna give you a couple more cofactors for this process to kind of push the process along for you. Those cofactors are often B12, B6, folate, um, B B2 as well. So a lot of the B vitamins are involved in helping push this, uh, this methylation process along. If you have a problem with methylation, um, it's not only going to result in that high homocysteine, it can have a symptomatic effects across the body. Because methylation is involved in liver detox, uh, people with problems in methylation tend to have high rates of cancers, especially cancers associated with hormones. So male and female type cancers, gynecological type cancers. When I see problems with MTHFR that uh, are uh, very penetrant through every generation, I tend to see cancers through every generation as well. These same people also tend to have high rates of depression and anxiety. Again, you're using methylation to process and make neurotransmitters, so you know, you're messing with that system if you're not as good at methylation. So what can you do about it? Um, because there are a couple genes responsible, it's a little bit more of a complicated picture than just yes or no, do you have a mutation or do you not? Um, there are different biochemical workarounds for each genetic picture, so it's good to work with somebody who really knows genetics. Work with a doctor, work with a genetic counselor. Um, but if you are just able to find out from you know, third-party genetic testing that you do have some methylation problem, a lot of them uh, can, at least like a bit of a safety net, is just taking a methylation supplement that's a blend, often a blend high in B vitamins, um, and then some other cofactors that pu push methylation along. I really like Thorne's blend. I really like the blend from Claire Labs, which is pretty inexpensive for what it is as well. Um, and a lot of medical supplement companies have good blends. They'll usually say methyl or methylation right in the name. So methyl balance, methyl guard, methyl, uh, you get it. Um, uh, so how can you test for this? You can get a lot of this information just from a simple third party test like a 23andMe. It won't necessarily tell you on that report but a good way to do it is you pay $10 to this company, Genetic Genie. They link up right on the internet, talk to each other themselves, and Genetic Genie can 
uh, generate a report about your methylation genetics and about your detox genetics, which again is a little difficult to interpret without somebody who is used to looking at these things. So best to take it to a doctor, um, but you can start a, sort of start to get an idea yourself. Over 50% of people of European descent have some polymorphism, some variation in one of these genes that control methylation, often MTHFR itself, um, and a lot of people of African descent as well. Um, and even if your descent is of other continents, you, you're very likely to have some polymorphism in this gene, maybe not a complete you know, reduction of, of methylation capacity, uh, but some variation. So I see patients all the time. There are many, many patients who I uh, genetically test and trend the endpoints of methylation like homocysteine for to make sure that we're managing that process for them. I myself have an MTHFR polymorphism and I have to manage my own methylation not only to mitigate my long-term risk of cancers and cardiovascular events and vascular events and dementia, um, but also just to make sure my mood stays good and uh, my, all of my detox capacity is functioning perfectly.